Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. It is podcast time and another absolutely stellar lineup for you. We've got James Sutton, Jay Spearing, and the hero for today is Georgia Stevens. Before we start, let's give Georgia a round of applause because in less than half an hour she's got ready and she's been a hero. So thank you very much. Why um, why why have we needed Georgia to step in? Well, Adam Rowe was supposed to be on it again. Um but he's he's He bailed, didn't he? Yeah, he, he bailed. What's the, re- the what's the reason? Yeah, what's the reason for that? He, he didn't want to, didn't want to continue to bail to the toilet every five minutes. Which is uh-huh. his words as well. So, I mean, Pathetic. His, his tummy's fine when he's got something to promote and push. That's all. Yeah, I'm saying. do you know what when I mean? He's got, when he's got a YouTube show come out, mate, his, his, his stomach's fine. But um, oh, he, get, he pushes through, doesn't he? Yeah, maybe, maybe next week. Yeah, <laughs> um, and also before we start, Jay, it's a two-year anniversary. So, uh, congratulations to you as well. Um, Thank you very much, mate. For those that aren't aware, go to Jay Spears' Instagram and go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, competition with Jürgen, Jürgen Klopp doing the robot or just, just, just doing this I thought it was, uh, it was I just had to go with it I had to go with it do you know what I mean I can't like stay stiff as a board you've got to like, at least give it a bit whether you look good or not you know <laughs> At least have a go. <laughs> yeah. By the way. Uh, today, today's kickoff question comes from Jamie Cubis. He said, if you could rid one place of people for one day so that you and your loved ones could go and have a day out there in peace, where would you go? Now, I want to go first because I've seen this question and I've, I've thought about it. But Oh, you've had time, haven't you? Yeah, I've had time. So, it requires several places of getting rid of. And the first place to go to, would t- I'd take my daughter to Disneyland. So, like, fair play, fair deep, play. Because you need a pilot to fly the plane and you need people to take it. So, you can't run it complete, completely. Well, if you're going to run around and have characters and just, like, just you two for the full day, like, I think I'd enjoy that as much as a seven year old. So, that's where I'm going. Um, Georgia? That's a really good one. I was thinking, like, holidays of where's empty, like, and super... Probably New York, I think, more for the idea of, like, Times Square while it, while it's empty. I think that would be an experience. But, yeah, I would have probably gone with Disneyland as well, I think, just because it's, like, going... the queues. <laughs> yeah, every ride would be able to go on. James? Um, yeah, pro- probably a holiday destination because that's the, like there's nothing worse. And I, I, you know, I'm not an anglophobe. I've got nothing against us British people, but there's nothing worse <laughs> than when you go somewhere really exotic and everybody you just bump into a load of English people. Yeah. And like you could, I mean, speaking of, you could go anywhere in the world and you'll bump into a load of scousers anywhere <laughs> in the world. Like you could be on the most remote beach. And you're like, hey, oh, lad. Oh, <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? So yeah, probably a holiday destination so you could just sit in peace and not be, you know, not be bothered and not listen to British accents all day. Yeah, Jay. Um, only because I was meant to go there in the summer. We were looking at a safari. Ooh. So for me, like... prob- <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget me. I know, yeah, it's over now. No, I'd, I'd say we were looking at going this year. So for me, it'd have to be obviously Africa and go like a safari with the kids and like you know, like see like the animals in like a, a natural habitat sort of thing. So. Wicked. All right, we're going to get into our, some of our subjects now. Uh, each guest has picked a subject to choose from. Um, James and George, you've got yours. Jay, we'll come to yours in a second. But we're going to start it off with, and I don't really want to have this conversation, is the Coutinho debate. Now, I know loads of people at home who are listening and watching. It's been going on for a couple of weeks. I hate transfers. I don't get the obsession with transfers. But we're jabbing back. James? Um, I'm torn, to be honest. Like, on the one hand, massively talented player no question about it I mean Jay will, Jay will probably be able to fill us in better on you know his attributes and stuff but from what we see from the outside looking an incredibly talented player um, on his day absolutely unplayable but the way he left and the way he went about it and I, I don't know I, it, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth and I'd love to be able to forgive and forget but like I don't know I'm, I'm bitter I'm bitter and I hold grudges and I'm not ashamed to say it so George, no you say that like he's gone to Everton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just, you know, I, I think, you know, before we left the club, I'm pretty sure, I, I, I don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure Jurgen Klopp said something like, if you stay, they'll build a statue to you and you'll be, you know, you'll be, hmm. you'll be thought about forever. And if you go to Barcelona or Madrid or somewhere, you'll just be another player. And I think that's kind of come true. And I do have a little bit of sympathy for him. But at the same time, if someone told me, They'll build a statue of you, and you know you'll you'll go down in, in folklore as a legend. 
I don't know how you turn that down. So, no, bollocks to him. I don't want Coutinho back. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> James, do, do, do you think it's difficult for us to kind of humanise footballers in that sense? Because, like, we've all, we've all made mistakes and we've all, like, yeah. Yeah, we have to remember, like, we're all Liverpool fans. Like, we can't, we don't get the perspective of, like, wanting to go to Barcelona because yeah. our dreams make Liverpool. So, in that, yeah. and, he, and he was promised things as well. You know, he, he got promised, you know, this this deal would get done and he hung on for a couple more months. So, I'm not, I'm not defending him. I agree with you, but also... There's two sides to every story, isn't there? Yeah, no, I get it, and I get, and I, I equally, I get why you know why why uh, Spain is attractive to a player. You know, certainly, you know, someone, you know, he's from South America, and obviously, you know, it's, it's a similar way of life. So I, I get, I get that, and I'm sure you know his wife and family are probably happier in, in Spain in a warmer time. But I just can't get over the fact that you know it's Liverpool Football Club. It's you know, there's I, I can't get over it. Sorry, no, not having it. Don't want no. it back. No, not happy. Jay, not happy. Um, do you know what for me I think I think as a player it's trying to fit him in um, you know what I mean I think if he came back the way the club have gone and the way the team's gone listen when he was here he was outstanding he was incredible he was he was a standout player for the club And but even then we did have good players but we didn't have as good players as we've got now and I don't know I just don't know where he would fit in um, do you think it upset the balance, Jay, of, of a team of seeing someone kind of the way that, like James said, the way he, he went and come back? Yeah, I, I, mean, he, I mean, like, I, I mean, the sense of, well, if he can go away and kick up a fuss and go and then, you know, yeah. everyone come back with open arms, what message does that send to the rest of the players? Do you know what? I think a lot of them probably wouldn't think about that. I think a lot of them would accept him because of the quality that he is. Um, but then you can flip the coin and go, well, obviously, fingers crossed, we get the season done and we, get, we win the league. But we want to win the league a year after, then why not bring people like that in and have him involved in the squad? And that's another point that you could look at. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, it, it kind of divides for me because obviously I've, I've been fortunate enough to see him on a daily basis and know how much of a good person and how much of a uh, good player that he is. But I understand obviously where your views are coming from with the way that he did leave. But again, I just think if Liverpool want to improve and keep winning titles and keep challenging and keep doing whatever they're doing... I don't see why we couldn't build a squad and him be part of it. No, I don't want to cut anyone off. No, um, <laughs> having, having worked with him, Jay, and you know, yeah. you, you know better than anyone, he, he, he seems quite a motivated player. He's not someone that I imagine would come back and accept just being a squad player, being on the bench. He'd want to be in the first team, right? I mean, mm. he, He'd yeah. want, he, there's no way he's coming back to be on the bench. No, I'd get that. And that, that's a challenge and probably something that you'd have to consider before you probably would bring him back. Would he be happy to settle? Obviously, you've seen the clock likes to rotate and doesn't really settle on stuff. He's always changing the midfield free, really, isn't he? So it's, again, like it's a good point because would he be happy to have a rotation or would he want to be the main man? Because mm. at the end of the day, the front three kind of get their name on the sheet straight away because of what they've done for the last two or three seasons. Um and would he be willing to come and try and prove that he should play ahead of people? So, and if I was if I was if I was Naby Keita or you know Min- Minamino, I'd be and if they brought Coutinho back, I'd be I'd, yeah. I'd be I'd be pissed off, man. Like I'd be on, I'd be unhappy you'd be with pissed, that. You'd be pissed off, but then here's another one to obviously change a whole hey, different I'll, subject. I'd pick Coutinho over them too. It all, it also depends on Genie Manaldo as well. If Genie Manaldo, oh Genie, no Genie, Genie's not going nowhere, mate. He's, no. he's he's good, but them too. I think if I had to pick out of them three, like I've just said, I'd pick a senior. Yeah, George, this is this is also skewed in the fact of, of the transfer market. You know, post coronavirus market in that sense of you know a deal for Coutinho might seem more plausible than it did three months ago because if it's a loan to buy or to get someone in or you know we realise that Liverpool can't afford a certain team. Oh, I'm not going to say his name. You know. The options might change in that sense, and I, I, I think I agree with Jay in the sense of the players won't think about that. The players know him on a, on a personal level, so in that in that sense, you know, they might not be pissed off with him, but like they know the quality of the player, but they know him on a personal level to say, yeah, you suit this, you you take us to another level still. I think that I think if you know he's an, an individual who's most places he works hard and by all counts he is and things, and I think players at the end of the day, it's your job to to play. It's not your job to get involved in how fans react to things or what the, the goings on behind or if got, and if he makes the team a better team and he's gonna win you help you win that league that season, you don't really care how he left on that pitch. You don't care about it, you know, when you crop off and at home and have a, a little kind of chat to, to the wife and kids and things, but you don't care at the end of the day. So I think it does seem more plausible and it would be I'd welcome him back. Not because 
us for the same reasons as if we want to build this legacy and win the league again and not have this one-off, you know, asterisk, whatever. He's a great player to help do that. Yeah, one thing's for certain, if he goes somewhere else this summer, this conversation needs to stop because he's been at two different clubs now. And every time there's a transfer window, I know I brought it up. We're like, we get Coutinho back, are we getting Neville for Kid? Like, it just yeah. needs to go. But uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Would you have him back and why? And if he wouldn't, again, why? Um, James Sutton, your subject today is, yeah, is the yeah. chants and songs. Yeah, so I'm 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 doing I'm doing something with Standard Chartered um, to the to the final nine games, um, doing like a soundboard thing. So we, you know, we get they get they're getting fans involved, and we're going to be able to queue up chants and songs and and things, you know, to go alongside the match. So I was just wondering, like, you know, talking about songs and and, and chants and stuff, what your favourites were? If you had any great memories of maybe an away trip, or certainly for Jay. You know, hearing a song that's, you know, soundtrack to season. Like for me, the Ale 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 song is like the perfect soundtrack to, 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 to current Liverpool. It's dead easy to pick up. You know, even, the, even you know, some of the foreign lads who, who perhaps don't know all the words can get involved in the chorus. And I just think it's, it, you know, it's, it's a song that kind of it builds and it builds and it gets everyone together and it gets all the crowd up. So for me, that's that's like the song right now for me that that kind of you know um, uh, says exactly where we are as as, 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 a, as a club. And I just wondered what your your thoughts were. Jay, do you want to go first? Not on. Best song I think I probably <coughs> ever heard was "There's Only One Jay Spearing." <laughs> I started that off, Jay. That was me. What's his mum and dad? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, obviously for yeah, for me. Um, do you know what? It's tough, you know, because I think. You'll never, like for me, obviously as a fan coming through the academy and dingy and it, I still get shivers every time I go to a game and just hear you'll never walk alone. Um, that for me is just a, them probably one of the biggest iconic things that you'll hear. Um, yeah. As a kid walking out onto the pitch and hearing the crowd sing that and the scarves and the banners and the flag, you know, everything about it. Even wherever you go, home, away, Wembley, European nights, it just seems to be, I don't know. I understand, like LA, yeah, the, obviously the LA is like, it's unbelievable. I think like Jamie, Webb, obviously Webster's coming and he's yeah. created some unbelievable chance that people have all, you know what I mean? It makes this new era of Liverpool so much better again. Um, but yeah, I'd have to go with you'll never walk alone just for the simply of obviously what it meant to coming through as a kid and whatever. Yeah, I think it depends what kind of mood you're in and with the situation. Because like the Bobby Firmino song for me is like one of the best and like it's Southampton away this season me and Tom went to it was literally five to ten minutes of just constant singing the Bobby song like everybody's bouncing everybody's singing it and yeah. the funny thing was like he's like you know he'll score a goal like he missed the sitter and then we all started singing it and then, then, he, then he scores so like it obviously has a, has a rapport with him but like it feels if Anfield Road's another one for me I think you know if you're, you're on the cop or you're in the stadium yeah. that's a boss one but I think you'll never walk alone because I think it has such a meaning to a different meaning to different people for for different times. Yeah. You know, it's about embodiment. It's about it's about the club. It's about being together and sort of thing. But I, I, without going down a dead dark route, like me, me, my dad wasn't well once, and they they used it on the advert for the McMillan cancer support thing. And it was a lad, I'd like just come back from hospital from seeing him, and it was like some little lad holding his dad's hand. Went, You'll never walk alone, dad. And like like me and my mum were just like crying at home. So every time you hear it, you know, it takes you back Special. to a certain memory or, mm. or a certain place. But I think it. That resonates with, with people on so many different levels. Like Jay says, like just hearing it, you know, it's spine singing, it means something to someone. I think so. I think you'll never walk alone is the ultimate one for me. And these and these songs, you know, they obviously, you know, we we all live in the UK. Or some of you know, we've travelled around and stuff, but it doesn't matter where you are in the world. These songs bring they unite all all supporters together. You know, you can be in. I, I watched the uh, I watched the Champions League final in a in a bar in Mexico uh, last. Uh, we were on our honeymoon. And uh, just hearing of it, hearing the songs and singing the songs made me feel like I was, you know, I was there and I was part of it, you know. And that's the same kind of the world over. It's a spe- special club, man. Special, special songs. Georgia, I think uh, I agree with both of. You'll never walk alone. Don't think you could ever really top. But just to be different, I probably say it's between either the Bobby song or when Salah's song very first like started coming out and people started yeah. singing it. Yeah. And I thought this yeah. is. It's really catchy. I like so it. good, so good. <laughs> you just sat there thinking, why have we never thought of this? This is brilliant. Yeah. So I think probably uh, Salah's song, and it was only because it was his birthday the other day, and it started floating around again. I thought when that first come out, that was good. That that was a good time. He's got a few <laughs> songs now, hasn't he? He's well appreciated, isn't he? Um, Georgia, your topic for today is Premier League celebrations. Yeah, I think. Um, 
it's all it's all I think because football's coming back and we're getting kind of we're accepting the fact you know we're going to win the league and and celebrations and things like that is what what everybody's planning on doing whether you feel that there's a bit of a dampener put on it I know Klopp said we'd do it um, a parade next season halfway through if that meant and I completely agree with that but I've also seen kind of things of doing what the Irish did during Paddy's Day and everyone getting in their car and having like a flag out and things like that. People are starting to decorate the houses round by where we are. So what what's everyone kind of doing and have you obviously plans have changed? What are you up to, Jay? Getting the gardeners in while you celebrate. <laughs> yeah, mate. No, um, it, I think it all depends on what we're allowed to do, to be honest. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, obviously we all want to be there. We want to like, if... Listen, if you said to Scousers what you want to do, they'd all be stood outside the ground and you'll have hundreds of thousands all around Anfield waiting for that moment. And they'd feel exactly the same feeling, obviously, more in, more outside than inside. But I don't know. It's simply just going to have to be like what we're allowed. Uh, we were thinking of getting as many people around in the garden as possible and watching it on the TV through, you know what I mean? And anything like that, just to... Because it's such a special occasion. And like, listen, I'm 31 years of age and I've never seen Liverpool have the chance to, to do it. Uh, and like you said, we would have been such a special club and being like a massive fan. It's going to be a really special occasion. I don't want to ever forget, really. Um, so I'm going to try and do as, as much as we're allowed to do, really. <laughs> yeah. it's a dangerous game, isn't it, James? Because like Jay says, like, you know, you'd love to, like, we had plans to go to town for a week, probably. Yeah, and, like, exactly. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and not, not go home. You know, like, you mooted Sefton Park last week to us, James. And it's like, you know... Things could change in a week's time, or it's, it's, it's when those celebrations happen. Because if you beat Everton, you know, it's, what, 10 o'clock at night, you're not going to a park, or you're not going into the town, no. or anything like that, are you? But yeah, equally, but when, when, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you don't know the city very well. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but you can, you can celebrate in different ways, because it'll be the day that they actually lift the trophy as well. That's another excuse. Yeah. Like, like Jay says, things might develop where you can have, you can have a house party then. You know, yeah. you the, I think I think it's, it's you know it's just about it's about being sensible. You know, we we all, we all want to have a big session and, and and a big celebration and a big party. I think Jay's got it right. If you've got the opportunity to be in a garden and have lots of have you know have, be socially you know responsible um, and having loads of friends around, that'd be the ideal thing. Maybe get like a big screen outside to maybe watch the final game or something. I mean, what what's kind of struck me in recent weeks when I've been talking about it? What are the players going to do? When they when they officially win the league, like because they, like they're not going to really be able to celebrate. Like the final whistle goes, you can't. You're not supposed to be hugging each other. So do they all just yeah. kind of walk off? But like a massive a massive thing is look at the Champions League final. The first thing the half the lads did was run to the fans. Yeah, you know what I mean. And he was signalling yeah. to the fans, and he were waving to family and all that. It's just going to be like it's going to be bizarre. Oh, let's help, let's help, let's help yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Well done, Jay. <laughs> yeah, well done, mate. <laughs> it might be a run to each other. And go, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's yeah. that's going to be bizarre. You know, a thirty a thirty odd year wait, and and you know the final whistle goes, you've won the league, and it's kind of like. Okay, should we just well should go back then? Well done. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe they should just, days. if it's against Everton, just social distance from their players and just go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I think there'll be enough of that going on, mate. Make no mistake. Make George, no mistake. what are you doing? Uh, probably the same as Jay, Gordon, kind of girls people as we can let's around. all go to Jay's house we'll let's put, all go to Jay's on. house we'll, <laughs> put his, we'll put his address in the description below <laughs> <laughs> have a cute what's that we do <laughs> charge mate charge get, the, get <laughs> the ale in Jay come on. come on what are you doing Georgia yeah probably the same just kind of get as as many as you can kind of fit socially responsible as you say and um yeah probably that I mean it, it, what we'd be doing anyway with just less people which is a bit, but um, is it, I, is it, is it dampened for anyone or a kind of anticlimactic in the sense that like, you know we joked about going to town for a week, but is it made it made easy by the fact we've had three months to prepare to say this is going to happen and we can't celebrate that we want to celebrate? I think it's I think it's I think it is I think, it is, I think it, there is an anticlimactic feel to it. No, there's you know make no mistake we've waited a long long time for this and to not be able to celebrate as we want to and not be able to all get together in town there is there is a there is a kind of bit of sweetness to it i think um it's it's really tricky it's really tricky nobody envisioned that after you know 30 odd years this would be the situation we find ourselves in so that there is there is a kind of negative connotation to not being able to celebrate it because football without fans is nothing and fans without other fans is you know isn't the same you know there's going to be a lot of reds out there that are going to end up kind of you know people who live alone maybe who are going to be sat there you know not really knowing quite what to do 
Um, and that's and that's really really sad. Um, but yeah, we yeah, it, it is what it is. We've just got to get on with it, and hopefully there'll be a parade next year. Yeah, the club's already said we'll celebrate them when we can. So let's, yeah, we've got, we got that thought forward to as well. Uh, let us know in the comments below where you we celebrating in the world, how you're going to celebrate, and who you're going to be doing it with. Um, Jay, what is your topic that you would like to discuss today? I was going to go along the, obviously the parade and that, yeah. But I've been thinking about it and just like a little bit of a trivia one, really. If you had to lose one of the front three now, who who would you lose? That's a loaded question, Jay. The comments. This was such a joyful podcast. What have you done? I've just thrown. I've just thrown a bomb in there now. Because whoever whoever we say we're going to get hate for, make no. You won't get hate for it. You won't get hate for it. (laughs) Are you are you new to YouTube, Jay? (laughs) No, I'm I'm good. It's like a battlefield out there. I am just got you all ready for it under the field. I'm keeping uh, shush. I'm not saying that. Oh, it's yeah. all your answers. Uh, I think it's only fair <laughs> if we get ladies first on this one to choose. <laughs> <laughs> like, age before you, obviously, with your wisdom, I think you will have a better answer than no, no. himself. <sighs> Come on. Stand up for this one. <laughs> James? Oh, it is me first then. All right. Nice one, Georgia. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna to have to go with Firmino, and that really, that oh, really you horrible hurts man. Me. <sighs> no, but that really Thank hurts you. me. No, let me hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Yep. Right, you can't lose Mohamed Salah because his goals and assists over the past two, three years is head and shoulders above everybody else in the league. It, there's no, there's no question. You can't lose him. Sadio Mane plays football like I imagine I'd play football if I could play football. <laughs> Just with a permanent smile on my face, just enjoying every minute of what I'm doing, just tearing defences to shreds and just having a ball while you're doing it and a little bit of swagger and a bit of style. And as much as I love Bobby Firmino, if I had to pick one of the front three, I'm sorry, man, it's, it's, it's got to be it's got to be Bobby. And that pains me because I love him to death because he's a proper character and we don't have many characters in the league anymore who are a little bit out there. Everyone's kind of a little bit you know, a little bit muted, but he's he's still got a bit of flair and a bit of, you know, a bit of Brazilian swag. Oh, man, this is horrible. Jay, why do you it's ask tough. this question? Hey, why it's only because, this? no, listen, I'm only asking it because I, I like, because of how good they are. At yeah. the end of the day, if we win a league or two, what like obviously one after the other, there is going to be a big club, i.e. obviously the Real Madrid's, the Barcelona's again, that could come and tempt one of them players. I'm not saying they're going to, you know what I mean? But it was just like something that I thought, well, if you had to, and then yeah. if one if one club came in, the Barcelona or Real Madrid, and they had to take one of the front three, who would you more so think, well, if we lost him, we could maybe get someone to replace? That's all yeah, it is. Yeah. He's not Go going, on, by the way. Let the YouTube fan, <laughs> let them know. They're not going nowhere yet, but... <laughs> the inside scoop. Go on, James. Right, you, go, right. you go next, then. Go on. Who would you... No, no, it's right. We covered that subject now. James has done it. We'll move on to the <laughs> yeah, questions. Yeah. Yeah. Go direct, on. Direct, <laughs> direct your hater at the James Sutton on Twitter. Nino fans assemble. Vile, vile. Go on, Jay. Do you know what? I, I, it's tough for me, um, but I'm going to go opposite here. I'm going to go Salah. Ooh, outrageous. A, no, no, listen, no, no. I, I, and again, he's not going nowhere, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I just feel that within Mane for the last three, like since he's been here, I think he's incredible. The amount of work he does for the team as well and his assists and his, everything about, like you said, a smile on his face. He just brings a real joy to football and what he's done for the club. I think you can't lose Bobby because of the, the the role that he has. I don't think there's another number nine out there in the world that does what he can do. He must, when defenders are coming into the week of playing Liverpool, they must think, like, sorry for the language, but F me. Like, I'm in trouble here. How do I control this lad? He goes deep, he goes, um, goes, deep, he goes behind. He, he, he doesn't play the nine role that probably they're used to. Um, Salah's been incredible and he always will like he'll go down and one in the history of Liverpool Football Club he will do because of what he's done um, but if I had to lose one of them to a big club I'd probably say Salah um, I just feel think, as if go on do you, do you, do you think Salah's I, 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 this isn't a loaded question I'm not trying to set you up for a fault do you, do you, no, think, no. He's, do you think he's the easiest to replace out of the three then um, I'd say probably so yeah I think so I would Georgia. I'd ag- I'd agree. I I think if the question was who do you think is is going to get poached by a club and you have to deal with the team afterwards, yeah, it'd be Salah. 
because I think, like you said, I think Mane would, would step up to another level. Um, not that, you know, Salah's dampening or whatever, but when there's kind of three share and, of, you know, the share of goals and things like that, I think Mane, Mane would step up and I think you, you would be able to replace that role, albeit not to the standard that he's doing it. But I just, I don't think you'd be able to replace Bobby Firmino at all. Uh, sorry to kind of stick my knife in. You Don't take it personal. That there's nobody kind of like him, unless you want to completely change the 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 way that Liverpool play and the formation and things like that. And Mane, I think, is just entering. I think he's going to be even better for the next two three years. I think he he's kind of hitting his. It's unreal. Months. Another thing is like, do you think Georgia is the fact? That, um, do you think Salah's kind of like? Obviously, he's got more than one thing about him, but like, obviously, I feel as if Mane can offer different things he's unexpected like you don't know what he might do where uh, I'm not saying Sal is predictable but do you understand what I'm trying to say yeah, it, it, it'd be it'd be very harsh to call him kind of one dimensional yeah. because it's not that but when you compare him to the other two like comparison I think, <laughs> I think he would be the easiest to replace to like replace out of it yeah you know, a, Do you not a, think that's a repercussion of Salah being really good, though, because they've got more people marketing, which has allowed money to rise, So because you can't mark all three of them. Lately, yeah. Yeah. two seasons ago, or a season ago, when Salah was at his complete height and was bagging goals for fun, and Mane was kind of like, mm-hmm. you, you'd, you'd flip it and we'd probably be saying, yeah, Mane can be, be easily replaced, but the form at the moment and kind of trajectory they're on, I'd, I'd, I'd agree, Salah. I'm, I'm going to go with James on this one, and that really... Kills me to say, not because I don't like agreeing with James, but because I really love Bobby Firmino. Um, and, you know, I, I call it Bobby Bias because, like, I just love everything everything that he does. But, like, if you're talking about Salah, I was funny, someone mentioned it before about it being his birthday. You know, his stats are, like, 91 goals in 144 mm. games and 34 assists. And, and Ridiculous. Count, and, and countless awards. And he's a, he's a winger. I'm not saying we don't appreciate him. I, mean, I agree with everything that you said before about him. You know, I think this frustration of him, like, kind of taking snapshots or the not passing things kind of played into the media and maybe our minds are, are what we think about Mohamed Salah. But, like, I reckon once he left, we'd all go, fucking hell, like, he scored 20 plus goals for three seasons on the bounce, mm-hmm. which no Liverpool player has done since probably mm-hmm. Michael Owen's era. Yeah. And then go, and, and he's a winger. Yeah. So, why would you get rid of that? And, and again, the, the question is, is what you're replacing them with? Because I think Bobby Firmino, I think you're right, is impossible to replace but it's also that that flair he's easy on the eyes you know he's just a, a, an out and out piss taker isn't he well there is there, there, there is no right answer to that question no because, there isn't because, <laughs> because the three of them work so well in tandem like I, yeah. I'd be absolutely gutted to lose any one of those three. yeah this would be yeah that question as if like someone comes with like 300 yeah. million do you know what I mean yeah like if I, you had 300 million on the table and you have to choose one it's just like because at the end of the day like you said it's so hard to lose any of them it was just like you're never going to have a right answer because everyone has a different view of each person yeah so. and there's, there's, there's very I think it, 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 it strikes me it's quite rare to find a, a, a front three that works so, so well, well, well together like, that, yeah. okay. that just doesn't happen no. It just doesn't happen. You sometimes you might get as you know. There's the old-fashioned sort of strike partnership that used to, you know, it used to be the, the way to go. Certainly in the in the noughties and the nineties, but that seems to have been faded out a little bit now. But I can't think of many other front three pairings in world football that, that you know. Argue when United had Tevez, Ronaldo, and Rooney. Rooney. Yeah, that yeah. was really That's probably the closest. Yeah. Shall. Yeah. Yeah, we'll find out. Anyway, you, people at home can get involved as well by not shouting at us, by making your own choice <laughs> and backing up the reasons why, and then we'll abuse you back as well. The, uh, comment, the comments under this video are going to yeah. be a car crash thanks hey, to the algorithm yeah, all over, over me. Car yeah. <laughs> they have the algorithm. Um, so, yeah, let's let's move on. Um, this is the last <laughs> podcast before Premier League football comes back. Um, so, just before we get into a couple of questions from some of the viewers, I just wanted to get a general sense of how everyone's feeling, what everyone's going to be up to. Um, it's Jay, I'll start with you because obviously your your season's finished yeah. um, and I suppose it's you know we had a quick chat before we start recording it must be slightly difficult for you in the sense of watching football carry on are you not being mm. able to do that must be, must be so difficult for you do you know what mate it's a real blow especially with like you, you work so hard all year to get where you're in and then for all of a sudden to have it taken away but then see other leagues still carry on that is a difficult thing to take uh, we kind of had an inkling that was coming because of the financial way that obviously the clubs couldn't run without the, the, the support and whatever um, but for me it's a bit of excitement as well like I said to you before it's like just seeing football back on the TV um, 
having something to watch uh, rather than like Sophia the First and Disney films all the time with the kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sophia the First. Oh, right? <laughs> I know, I know all the songs from Baby TV inside. That was a <laughs> that. But now just to get back to like a little bit of norm, you know what I mean? Like slowly yeah. over the last like week or so, like slowly things are coming back to normality. And to it, like you don't realize how big football is in the world to people and what they, what a lot of conversations are about in work, outside of work, leading up to the week or whatever games coming. Do you know what I mean? So. The last week's been really enjoyable to talk about, like, the first game back. Oh, come on, what a game it's going to be. And then obviously mm. looking forward, you know what I mean? So, for me, it's just about and, being and as a And as a fan, Jay, as well, you know, we said before, Blue Flag won the, the title in, in your lifetime yeah. or any of our lifetimes in that sense. So, you know, I, I guess as much as it's hard, you can stop and watch Liverpool win the league yeah. and relax and enjoy it. Yeah, of course, mate. And that's what it is, yeah, making sure that I'm there to watch it and I'm not, like, got a game or training or travel anywhere, you know what I mean? I can watch it with, like, guaranteed to watch it, hopefully, with friends, if we're allowed. Um, <laughs> and just, you know what I mean, enjoy the moments. And, like you say, it's an experience I never want to forget. So I want to try and make it a, a special one and or as special as we're allowed to. Yeah, and just to round it out, James, as well, like, are you going to be addicted to watching every game? Because there's a lot, of, a lot of football on free-to-air TV and, like, you know, like Jay says, you just need that fix of like not watching the same shit on telly or having the same routine at night time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, there's only so much Netflix you can, you can watch. And the fact that the beauty of football is it's unpredictable. And it's, uh, those conversations that Jay's saying is like, did you see that in that game? Or did you see that in that game? You can't do it from games that have happened 10 years ago because we all know what happened. Nah, right, yeah. Whereas I, now it's like, let's let's go. Since since football kind of you know took a took a sabbatical. I've realised how boring I am. I have literally, <laughs> I have yeah. nothing else to talk about. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I, I'm, I am obsessive to the point that I am boring. Like I've completed Netflix. Nothing on there that interests me. I have nothing to talk about apart from Liverpool Football Club, and, and in fact, not just Liverpool football in general. I'm going to consume every single game I possibly can. Every game. Consume it. D- d- devour it. <laughs> And then take to Twitter and just spout a load of nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Get rid of get rid of Bobby Firmino. He can't do anything. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, exactly. My anti-Firmino bias. And again, George, just someone someone who plays football. You know, again, hard for you to kind of stop playing football to still train. But again, you know, to, to see Liverpool carry on a football, carry on in the Premier League. Are you glued to every match? Yeah, I think like James said, it's more. I've realised kind of. What 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 else have I got to kind of talk about other than football or the it's been the lack of football that has been still the conversation. Um I think yeah, I'm excited to just even if it's like a nil nil game, I'm just excited if you like we said, I think someone put on Twitter when football was first kind of cancelled of how lucky were we to even watch a Burnley Norwich like nil yeah. draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, I think with when the Bundesliga came back, there was a similar excitement at the start, and then it kind of dwindled out because I realised I had no real investment in it, and and once the kind of Timo stuff kind of I wasn't really bothered. Um, so I think now that there's something to kind of I have a stake in it, it's it'll be it'll just be so I'm just so excited for it to kick off again. Does anyone else feel like that with the Bundesliga? Because I I don't yeah. think I've watched I've not watched any of it. I think the hype was there and just like. I, yeah. don't, I, I don't. I like, I yeah. like football, but I don't care about the teams. I don't know the stories of the relegation of what's going on. In, you know, yeah, James. When it first, when it first okay. came back, sorry, when it first <laughs> came back, it kind of like I was thinking, come on, here we go, a yeah. bit of footy. But then within like a game or two, I was kind of like, oh, like like George just said, I ain't got investment into it, or yeah. I'm not. You know what I mean? My heart's not like into like. Obviously, I love football. At the end of the day, it's guys. I watch any game on the TV, but it kind of just didn't really do it for me yeah. uh, and then once obviously the talk of the Premier League was coming back I was thinking right, I got another buzz for that instead so mm, mm. I think my What's time gonna... thoughts on the, on the crowd noise are, are you behind that because there's a couple of games that I've seen like if you're watching it from home it doesn't really make a difference but it's not going to be it's not going to be the same as it I I think... I think I think they've got work to, I think they've got work to do they've, they've yeah. got work to do the, the the whole thing, it has to be really interactive and it has to make people feel like they've got a connection to what's happening on the pitch. And um, anything that kind of gives you, um, uh, that, 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 that sort of makes you feel something. So if, so say, you know, what's watching the Bundesliga is a great example. It's, it's completely desolate. There's no sound. You can hear, you, all you can hear is the ball being kicked and the occasionally, you know, you get an assistant manager shouting to, you know, tuck in or whatever. It's, it's really, really boring. 
to have to have crowd noises of any of any kind it give, gives you that connection to what's going on on the pitch and makes you feel emotionally invested in what's going on. So it can only be a good thing, but I think they've got a lot of work to do to kind of get it to a level where it feels like it's making a difference and it's not just there kind of to pay lip service. I think as well, I don't think broadcasters have realised the opportunity they've got of like for the first time ever, like we, I think we touched on a while ago, stadiums are empty. You've got the ability to kind of do what you want within kind of, you know, social reasoning and things like that. But what's to stop you to go over and have a chat to Klopp like halfway through the, what's to stop putting a mic near the bed? Like there's so much that could be done. And like you said, making it interactive and things instead of just having it empty. Like even if they were to boost the sound of the players talking on the pitch, like that was, that was. I was just going to say. There you go. Yeah. So we can all hear Joe Denson say fuck off fifty times a game. <laughs> but do you know what? Do you know what though? Some people like for me, I'd love to like even yeah. as a player yeah. now, I I lo- I'd love to hear players like what they say to each other. Especially the, like obviously they're, they're the elite at the end of the day. So to hear someone like say say Jordan Henderson or Hendo saying to someone Salah or Bobby or someone like fucking do this or do you know what I mean? Do that. It'd be like good to see that like they're on that level or like George said to hear Klopp. What does Klopp shout onto the pitch? Because as fans. You probably won't be able to, you know, you won't be able to hear that at Anfield. So it's just like a bit of an insight. And like you mm. said, like if the broadcasters have clocked onto a few things, I think fans would probably feel more in it hearing, especially like Liverpool fans hearing what 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 does Klopp say to them or what does he shout on? Mm. I think that's mm. the thing. You're never going to be able to replicate what it's like. No, it? never. You're never, and you're never going to be able to replicate even what it's like watching it from home while the match is going on. So offer something completely different. Like offer something that you can do now that you wouldn't be able to experience like going on the match or watching it from home. And you can only do that now. Yeah, just glad to have you back in our lives. Before we get into some questions, I want some top four predictions and you three to go down. Oh, uh, Christ. Um, oh. James. I'm going to have to the table here. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know who's... Okay, so uh, top four... Uh, well, top two, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. And then you're picking two out of probably four or five teams. Um, I'd, I'd love to see Wolves up there. I'd, yeah. love to see, I'd love to see Wolves finish up there. Yeah, and that'd be, I mean, it's fantastic. I, I've, got a, I've got a lot of love for, for, the, for Wolves as a club. I, I like their manager, their, cap, their captain, you know, big fan of Connor Cody. I'd love to see them up there. And then take your pick. I mean, I... I couldn't care less about Tottenham. Couldn't care less about Arsenal. I, I don't care enough to make a prediction. Leicester. I'm really sorry. Leicester. Yeah, Leicester. Leicester. I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Brendan Rodgers. Yeah. I'd like, I'd like Leicester to finish in the top four just because I've got a lot of love for Brendan. And you three to go down? Arsenal. That's not fair. No, that's not fair. I want to see West Ham get relegated. I mean, if you, I could do a whole show on reasons why I dislike West Ham. Um, from the owners down to the fans, to the stadium, to the bubbles, just get down, just go, get out, get out of the Premier League. <laughs> Jay, know, Jay knows what I'm saying. Um, and oh, yeah, other than that, I'm not, I'm not really that asked. Um, Villa, I kind of like Villa to stay up. I think actually, I've got a lot of fans, I've got a lot of friends that are Villa fans. I, I come, I come from um, the Midlands myself, so I got, yeah, I, I, I kind of like Villa to stay up. Apart from that. Yeah, I'm not really asked. George, 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 can you can, can you talk? on every Premier League club? <laughs> <laughs> Their fans. Yeah, uh, George, can you can you top asked as an answer? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a great answer, but it doesn't help with the podcast, James. <laughs> um, I'd probably say the same. I'd love to see Leicester up there. I'd love to see Wolves up there. Um, that's a dream is for, for Leicester and Wolves to be in the top four with us and probably for Chef United to get European football. Mm. Because yeah. I think even if it's Europa League, I think to see them, that's like a kind of, that's a, you know, a great story for them. First season back. Fifth might be, a, might be a Champions League spot at this rate, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it's, um, yeah, we, we all don't know what's really going on. I think everyone's just kind of forgotten about what's it's, going on. It's, it's, they've, they've started what's going on, but they're going to announce it at the beginning of the next month. <laughs> just believe it. <laughs> Stupid, aren't they? Yeah. Crazy. Um, yeah, bottom three, like James said, not really. I had got no feelings towards any of them. I mean... But you I, want West Ham to go down, though, yeah? 
It's okay. It's okay. Just slag off Karen Brady and move on. <laughs> yeah, go on. West Ham news can go down as well. And probably Villa, just to piss off James. <laughs> <laughs> go on Jay who's yours do you know what top four is pretty similar uh, but I'd love to see someone like Sheffield United get into like obviously Europe only to see how because how they play is so unique and like their style of play I'd love to see how foreign teams would try and adapt and try and handle it uh, mm. But obviously the story of them coming up and I just think everything they've done has been fantastic Wolves obviously for Connor um He's a great lad. He's been a real good guy, and uh, I th- I'd love them too as well. Relegation wise, to keep James happy, we'll go West Ham. Good lad. Um, but other than that, mate, it's kind of like <laughs> it's between any Bournemouth, Phil, and Norwich. Norwich are kind of done and dusted anyway. If you think mm. about it, I don't think they're going to do much. But yeah, I, I can see Bournemouth going down. To be honest with you, got um, no injury problems, Bournemouth. Or did yeah, they're, they're struggling. He just yeah. seems to be in a bit of a rut, and he just can't get out of it. So, but I'd like to see like what they would do with, or obviously what the manager would do, what Eddie would do. Would he stick around because he's been there for so long or would someone try and tout him from a, a bigger club, say? Yeah. Mm. Seen Ryan Fraser jump ship this week as well, didn't he? Or, or last week? He didn't, didn't yeah, well, con- I, had a co- I had a conversation about that the other day and I just feel that like all the fans are getting on his back far too... He's twen- what is he, 26? And he's in a team that's in the bottom three that got a chance of going down. And mm. you've got someone that likes, I don't know, it might be like Tottenham or Arsenal the same, aren't they? Uh, you have someone like that sniffing at you. Of course you're going to... Yeah. Not, you know what I mean? I know they said no disrespect to Bournemouth and the size of the club and the fans and whatever, but for for a career and to him to look back on his career, if he's got an opportunity to go to someone like that, then well, why not? Yeah. I'd have him at Liverpool, mate, if you, especially on a, on a free transfer in the current climate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Little, little rapport with Andy Robert down that yeah. left hand yeah. side. I agree, I agree yeah. with that, definitely, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get to some of your questions then. Um, hang on, I clicked on the wrong fucking thing. Um, Ronnie P. Harris says, which Liverpool player, past or present, would make the best Bond villain? <laughs> um, the best Bond villain. Andre Voyanen. Oh, <laughs> oh, do you know what? Yeah. She's just took the words out of my mouth. Oh. I was thinking of him, you know, with the pony, with the other pony he had the ponytail. Yeah. yeah. Lock. He'd look some slick fella in, wouldn't he? That's a <laughs> shout, that is. With some he, sort he, of, like, little cat or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn his hair around and stroke that instead. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think I'd go Pork and Chesky, just on the base of, like, he scared all of us after fucking death every time he touched the ball. So, like, <laughs> you know, like Dr. Evil look going on as well. I'm like, just, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, maybe... Maybe maybe Jibble Cisse, a kind of flamboyant kind of villain. Okay, yeah. Someone, yeah, someone who could be... Yeah, the gear he'd wear as well. He'd wear a different, know complete I mean? different yeah. suit. And he'd Hats. have a hat on a lot, wouldn't he? A hat, he'd have, he'd have a cane. Yeah. Probably a, jack, a jacket made of mirror ball, so he'd just be reflect. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about Jib Cisse. Ed Lorcan Smith says, what's the weirdest food or food combination that you've ever had? Food combination. food combination. A new food, mad food combination you have is when you go to like an all you can eat, isn't it? And it's got yeah. like, and a bit of got Italian, like, bit of Chinese. The, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. I don't really like randomly go, oh, do you know what? I'll have a cookie with. It's funny, this else. question came up. I was, um, I was flicking through Facebook yesterday and you had that, those rate my plates where people just sort of make up mad shit. And it was, it was two types of pasta with, with uh, cheese triangles and orange segments. I'm like, yeah, like what, what is wrong with people? People, uh, that's uh, ridiculous. That's absurd. Yeah. <laughs> you all were discussing it. Right, it was a And that came from Karen Brady in London. Caroline Louise says, what's the worst lockdown quiz that you've done? Oh, God, we did... Oh, we did had one, a few of them. Yeah, yeah. We, did, we did one for um, a friend of my wife's. It was her birthday. Um <laughs> And we, neither me nor my wife know her that well. Like, we know her. She's a mate. But we don't know her that well. And every single question at every round was about her. So, oh, no. Like, yeah. So the picture round was all about pictures of her growing up. I'd got a fucking clue. Wasn't there. Um, every <laughs> round. <laughs> facts about her. Hardly fucking know her. I haven't got a clue. So uh, we, uh, we got, like, two out of 50. And then had to... <laughs> And then had to tell our score, and we were both just mortified. Like, yeah, we don't, re- we don't really know you. That was Sorry, the quiz. Like, she was just figuring out who to like cross off of list. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, exactly, exactly. Below ten, no, no, no more. Uh, yeah. you, Chris. <laughs> Jay, what have you done? 
we've done some crap ones. We've had some pictures of people as babies, and we've got them completely wrong. Like they're just miles apart. And I was thinking, nah, that's not him. Um, I just thought, just I'm crap. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think I've come last on every quiz I've done. <laughs> It's, it's demoralising, isn't it, Jay? Oh, it's, it's, so, it's so bad. But the yeah. annoying thing is, though, a lot of the same questions come up and I still get them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that really I mean, annoys that's me. That's your own fault. <laughs> that's me, and I'm thinking, how, how's that possible? <laughs> I, so. I think it's hard when you do family quizzes because, like, for our ones, like, the, the, the age range is from, like, 70 odd to my grandparents to, like, my seven year old. Yeah. And to try and keep everyone entertained, you can see certain moments where people are getting pissed off, like, history for me, like, Fuck it, I give up. I can't be arsed. And everyone's getting annoyed at, at different segments of, of, of the thing. So, yeah. I never, ever want to do another quiz as long as I live after yeah. that. Also, I'm thanks, bored, thank, yeah. thanks for not saying the Redman TV podcast, the Redman TV quiz, James. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> nice, nice. Georgia? Uh, I can't give up on quizzes after the first week. Just got a bit bored. Went to puzzles, then got bored with that. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I, I have a very not a short attention span, but if sort and I don't enjoy it, I'm not gonna put myself through it, and I, mm. I just didn't enjoy it. So a virtual quiz, no thanks. I'm yeah, now you're all out. <laughs> uh, final question comes from Jeff. He's one of our Discord um, members. He says you have to take the place of one Liverpool player, and you gain their physical features. So, for example, you tell you get his strength and his pace. Or Virgil's height and strength. However, you must keep your own personal mental features, so your speed of thought, reflexes. Which player would you replace in the squad that best suits your frame of mind? Jesus. Oh, I'm taking Virgil all day long. Yeah. I've never been tall, mate, so I'd love to be about <laughs> six foot four. <laughs> well, it's different up here, isn't it? <laughs> hey, it's, it's look at this climate up here. It's different. <laughs> Man, I'd, I'd love to be him. I just feel like, obviously. For me, I've always been trying to be a bit of a role model and a leader and whatever. So I feel as if he's just like a massive leader on the pitch, and I'd love to just, you know what I mean? I'd definitely take him if my, in my opinion. Georgia, I'd probably take Hendo selfishly, just because I feel like you know, you get to lift the trophy. <laughs> I know it's a good shout. Yeah. Look when you're Liverpool captain, does that? Yeah. And I've got wine album and, and people around me here to, to pick me up if I mess up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James. Um I'd probably I'd probably probably Trent. Probably Trent. Oh, yeah. Uh you know, lo- local lad, really well thought of, you know, nice lad. And also <laughs> I'd get to hang out with Andy Robbo all the time and, and be in, you know, be in the WhatsApp with Andy Robbo and be, be Andy Robbo's best mate. So I'd probably do that. Yeah. So I could be Andy Robbo's best mate. Okay, I think I think I, I think I want to know James Milner, like you know, slightly older, a bit boring, but be able to run through brick walls at, at that age and be not fit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, I, I should obviously ten thousand steps a day now to so just like does that in sleep? A freak of nature, a yeah. freak of nature. Those yeah. players come along very, very rarely. Right, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're going to be back with more build-up content for the week. The football is back, so our content will ramp up as well. Start 11 shows, build-up shows, final word shows, you name it, we will be back. Um, the football will be back, and we'll see you then. ta